You're listening to Robert Martinez, the apartment rock star. Robert is a national award-winning real estate brand influencer and entrepreneur whose company, Rockstar Capital Management, was recognized as the 15th fastest growing company in Houston by the Houston Business Journal. In addition to his 11 100% refinance cash out events, his company has earned 15 city, state, and national apartment association awards. All right, so welcome to another episode of The Apartment Rockstar. This is going to be a special one. I think it's going to be one that's going to go down into the books. It's probably the most educational, uh, informative, and probably the most uh, unusual podcast we're going to have. Today, we have a very, very special guest host, a guest with me today, uh, probably going to co-host, they'll probably take over, uh, is Jose Alvarado. Jose is our Director of Maintenance. Uh, That's a pretty big deal when you're running 3,700 units. Uh, Jose has been with me since the very, very beginning, literally turned the lights on with me and Melissa. Um, and today you get to hear a little bit more about his story. Jose isn't just a pretty face. The guy knows what he's talking about. Uh, no maintenance man has won more awards in the last several years than Jose Alvarado. Jose, welcome on the Apartment Rockstar. Hey, Baldwin, how you doing? Jose, our first number question I want to <coughs> ask. Let me see, which one are you on? How are you upset that you weren't ho- guest number one? Guest, no. I not- didn't open this up with you. Not really. You know that I have to um, approve all these thousands, thousands of dollars. Well, that's true. You were busy. And it's yeah, and it's really my second time in this room. Like, wow. Boss man, you got me busy. You got me working in Corpus Christi, and all the way in two eighty eight. So. Well, I'm what do you busy. think? What do you think? It's really came nice. Out different. Beautiful. Yes. Came out good. Really nice. How do you like Love the new the setup theme. right here? Really Nobody nice. has some couches, but nobody has this. Nobody has this. This is really nice. You're excited, really nice. Jose. Tell us a little about your journey. Like, like. Who is Jose Alvarado? We're gonna have, the viewers want to know. Who they is Jose know Alvarado? Who you before Rockstar? Like, who were you? Uh well, I'm. Uh, um, I was born in Mexico. Let me go oh, back. Oh, we're gonna wait. I got here back. in the states. Yeah, I got here in the states in '94. Uh, my whole family. Uh, uh, we have uh, been raised uh, here in Houston. Uh, I was graduated in '04. But uh, in my high school years, now you're old now. Yeah, I mean, my priority was just work. I was lucky enough that my dad used to work on the construction field as a drywall, uh, you know, in a company. So th- that was my high school stuff. I didn't have opportunity to do sports because I was I was more in be working with my dad's team, learning how to process things. But you're quite the soccer player, things. though, aren't you? I was, yeah, in middle school from elementary, yes. Matter of fact, I was one of the first kids in 95, 96 in Heights. I was the first Hispanic guy that used to play really good soccer back back in the 90s. Oh, wow. Literally, that uh, school out there, I've, I, I think it was called Holden Elementary. Holden. They literally, yeah, they literally bought me everything. <laughs> were I was you recruited the there, Jose? Were you recruited to come play? Yeah. Were you yeah. like the the guy, the man on the campus? I think I was, man. I was that guy who used to score, you know. <laughs> so, you know, think catching up to the story, um, since I graduated, I joined my dad to do a drywall company. Uh-huh. Uh, so my backbone, of course, is the construction. But the number one thing, my backbone is to manage people, how to motivate them, how to work with pressure, and how to deliver our job. Uh, as everybody knows, 08, 09 hit, really bad. Banks closed. You had your own uh, company, didn't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was called Empire Drywall. Empire Drywall. Yes, sir. Yeah. By the age, by the age of 19, I was managing about 50 people. That's amazing. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then amazing. what happened? <laughs> 09 hit. <laughs> yeah. 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 09 hits. Uh, I was lucky enough that uh, your first manager, Miss Melissa Rado, yeah, uh, she introduced me to you, and uh, I remember you asking, well, "Well, what does Jose knows?" Because you know, uh, I did not know nothing about maintenance or nothing like that. Uh, no make readies. My back one was drywall again. So you recommend me to go to this property in Casa Verde, mm. and the and really Hispanic heavy community. Uh, one point. I remember you saying, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I can get Jose out there. That property had over 150 work orders of drywall because it was a lot of active water leaks. Mm. And as what you know, maintenance would just go repair the plumbing, but they will leave a big hole and just put some plastic. 
Uh, those 150 work orders, it was done in less than 30 days. And right there yourself and the property manager actually talked to me and said that they, I was really interested in learning the make ready world, maintenance technician world. And I said, yeah, well, why not? Uh, I was there for a year. In the first seven, eight months, I was at work for the best maintenance of that property. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it took less than a year that you made a decision to do Rockstar Capital Management. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, you know, one thing led to another one that they had let me go because uh, I think they overheard that you were trying to offer me a job as a maintenance in your new company. So right there and then they, they left me go. And uh, I was with you turning on lights on Norlake Manor Homes. Yeah, yeah. And from there over here, I mean, I've been with you almost nine years. Man, I can to tell you, years. there's something that everybody needs to know if you don't know. Jose is probably one of the hardest, if not the hardest working guy that I know. Uh, he is constantly out there. He's constantly in the sun. He's constantly doing whatever it takes, um, you know, to get the job done. And I do remember that property. It was Casa Better Apartments off Alden Bender. Yes, sir. It was, Everybody. I don't know, my third or fourth investment oh, with, wow. with my previous management company. Uh, 384 units, Class C minus. Yeah, it was 10 maintenance out there. And, 10 maintenance uh, on the 10 outside. 10 maintenance out there. massive property. Yes, yes sir. With massive issues. Um, you know, I, I don't own it anymore today, but I'm really proud of that property because we actually bought it before the recession, operated throughout the recession, and survived. Yeah. And we actually yeah. pulled a refinance out, pulled a bunch, I think 100% out. I don't know how we did that looking yeah. back on it now, but we did it. And it was an amazing accomplishment operationally. Um, but certainly it came through a lot of hard work and effort from you and the rest of your maintenance guys there. And I know when we started Rockstar and, you know, we were, had the opportunity to kind of form that first team, you were definitely on that list of people yes, that sir. were going to come. So, you know, Jose, you and I go way back, man. Man, I mean, we go there, way there's... back, man. Since one time that you were sinking a boat, I mean, all the way over here, man, having all these people with I mean, that. When I was sinking a boat? <laughs> yeah, remember that time about? sinking no, a boat in Colorado, Texas? No, I don't we're going to sink a boat. <laughs> so one time we were doing a, uh, a company event, company yeah. event, appreciation event. Uh, we, we already had bought our first two sites, and uh, we are on Lake Conroe. I, I had a boat membership there at, yeah. uh, at a boat club. And we rented out like a, a no, was it a pontoon or what? No, it wasn't a pontoon. It was that double tube. It was uh, a pontoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, the wind, the waves got really heavy, Next and, thing, you know, and water it was about raining, the and the water was coming into the boat. We had to move everybody to the back of the boat so we wouldn't yeah. sink. Yeah, I was actually really scared because I don't swim really well. <laughs> I don't swim. And you don't either. <laughs> and uh, uh, there was some really good memories. But uh, let's catch everybody up to where we're at today. So I say you were there when we had. Next to nothing. Next to nothing, yes, and sir. And we yes, grew sir. together, and you were one of the first award winners. Yes, I sir. I mean, you, you were awarded, uh, you actually, you won three awards in a Rich very award. short amount of time. Um, back in, well, I guess, 2012. That's um, right. Yes, you won uh, City Maintenance Technician of the Year. So what that means is that I was the best, best technician in Houston. Yeah. Then from there, you motivated me, and we went to Texas. So I competed with Texas. Yeah. So I was the number one maintenance Texas. Yeah. Oh, like, man. Then we took wow, it national, Bob, man. man. And then you were like, you know what? Let's push the envelope. Let's go nationals. And I was like, where are we going to go? I was like, we got to go to, um, what was that state? Uh, LA? Uh, San Diego. San Diego, right? And I was there and I was just like this. And boom, next thing you know, uh, uh, nationals. So for the last 10, uh, no, for the last 80 years, I found it, I actually found this. The beginning of this year, it, I was the only one in the United States in the last eight years that have won city, state, and nationals. Last year, it was another gentleman who has the same the same title as me, but I guess it took almost seven to eight years. Oh, for him, you yeah. did it much faster. You yeah. did it like in two years or two, something like that. Two, three years. Yeah, right? so that was well, the numbers. That, that was the you know today <laughs> we have seventeen city, state, national apartment yes, association awards, and you're three of them. Actually, you're for them. <clears throat> yes. You won, you won regional maintenance, tech, uh, maintenance manager of the year as well. Yes, wow. And then for some reason, we just keep being disqualified. Uh, I was like, I do not know nobody that manages over 3,500 units and uh, don't deserve to have another opportunity. Uh, to win. You know, that's the competitive nature in you. We'll get them in next year. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, together we've won a lot of awards. And, sure. and uh, you know, it, it's been an amazing ride. Mm -hmm. Um so we told everybody how we met. We told everybody a little bit of your journey and how you got to Rockstar. Yes, sir. So discuss everybody, like, where we're at today. I mean, could you imagine where we being 20-some I mean, we... properties and 3,700 units? Like, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis now? What I do daily, 
I mean, to explain from the beginning to today uh, where I'm sitting right now that we have over, what, 100 employees today easily, mm-hmm. it's been really hard because the only school that I know from maintenance operations is from you. Mm-hmm. I read and I understand exactly how you want me to see numbers, and that's the school that I have from you. Right. Uh, today, um, the number one thing is we make money when we renew. We renew. Now when we do the prettiest make ready, and now when we do this. Why is that, Jose? Well, because we because when we renew, we ask for a, a, a bump, and we don't spend money. There you go. You know, matter of fact, today we were talking about that or. Medium spends about 15, worst scenario, about $3,500 to turn a bad unit. Right. Because And let's think about it. Let's go back into that, right? I mean, because you were in that meeting today. If, let's say it is $1,500 to $3,500. That's money that didn't have to be spent. Exactly. If they would have just have renewed. Exactly. Right? And what goes back to getting the renewal? Everything goes back to customer Everything service. Everything goes back to Bob. customer service. I mean, uh, um, you, know, you know, the uh, school that we have for me is that sometimes it takes a little bit from somebody just to go knock on a simple door, mm-hmm. you know, say, hello, how madam. How are you doing? You know, how you doing? I noticed that uh, your contract will be over maybe 90 days, but that will mean the world to the resident. Mm-hmm. I think I think there's a high percentage of every single property, that there's a high percentage of the resident that don't feel that they care about the residents. Mm-hmm. And I think 50% of the battle is they don't care about me, the office, so I'm just leaving somewhere else. Right. So a minimum, I'm just going out there, Go talk to the resident and say, if there's something I can help mm-hmm. you, you know, they were like, you know what? Just for that, I'm going to sign my contract mm-hmm. again. Yeah, I think I think people care when other people care about them. Yes, sir. You know, yes, invest sir. in me, uh, value my opinions, value how I feel, <clears throat> you know. I mean, and we're in the business. I mean, that's come on. We're thinking about you don't want just want one sale. You want the second sale. You want the third sale. Exactly. And we try really hard. As you said, the renewal is the the big piece, right? The big success is why we have 12 refinance events is because people renew and they don't move out. But one of the things we do early on uh, when they when, when they first move in is that they have a new air condition. Yes, sir. That's one of the big things we do in our rehabs. Our rehabs are very thorough. They're very consistent. I don't think we have the best interiors that we're not going to have the latest and greatest, but basic services, but we're going to have, we're gonna really have the basic pretty. services covered. Yes, and that yes. number one is it cannot be 100 degrees outside in August and 86 degrees in your apartment. So what do we do, Jose, on our rehabs? Well, we would definitely, definitely take care of the basic things. Yeah. Basic things is going to be brand new ACs, but definitely brand new boilers. Yeah. Because everybody wants to take a warm shower, a hot shower. Twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. Whether it's three in the morning yes. when they get home or yes. six o'clock in the morning when they they gotta go to work, they exactly. gotta have good water, hot water. They have to have uh, uh, water, and that we we are pretty good to have every single work order in less than twenty four hours. Now, twenty four hours doesn't mean a one day, but it kind of means under two days. Yeah. We only work, you know, like about well, you know, the seven to eight hours a day. Eight to ten, hopefully. Eight to ten. But from that to the next day, we'll get that work order. Yeah, that's for right. sure. You know, and I, I think that's important. I think it's a, you know, we get a lot of flack, especially early on. You know, why do y'all spend so money? Why are you spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on new air conditioners? Air conditioners are still good. They still have life. And I'm like, well, because I'm going to take away the unknown. I'm going to take away the uncertainty that the air conditioners are going to fail. Yes, sir. Because yes, sir. if it doesn't fail in August, that's going to improve my chance of them renewing. 50% of the reason why people move out is because of maintenance. And then one maintenance headache is air conditions. AC's Eliminate that from the equation, you're fine. Borders, now we moved on to borders, right? Because, I mean, you know, as we've grown, we've changed our thought pattern. Everybody works really hard. You said they work 8, 10. Some people work 10, 12, work 12, 14 hour days. They're outside. They're hot. They, they're frustrated. And they work, they're blue collar, right? They work, workforce housing is what we provide. And, you know, they just want to come home to their apartment. And they want to know that everything's going to sure, work relax. right. Yes. They want to know that the AC is cold. They want to know that when there's hot water on demand. And appliances are working correctly. And the appliances know, are working correctly. The refrigerator not, you know, broken. Yeah. The stove's not working. I mean, they they they, uh, they enjoy being a rock star member. Uh, we have another five. Um, I guess that's not the word. But uh, we have worked so much. And we have learned to squish every single dollar that we have in our rehabs. For example, one of the... Uh, one of our one of my favorite things when I do a rehab with Rockstar is that um, we find the right people to do the job for us. Right. 
with that say is you know we focus a little bit more and giving an opportunity to small companies for mm-hmm. example the ac companies right it's a big difference a small small somebody they just need the opportunity you know to have a contract like this so my job is to go look for those kind of companies give them the opportunity have everything i write and of course right and insurance everything in there but with that we are so good at it that we save enough money just to have money to even have a leftover to put brand new appliances in every single unit yeah that's how much we save money you know, that's, that's that's how good we are. Right, we because again, it goes back to the renewal, right? <clears throat> we want to make sure that people who are renting with us, we want to make sure that if they're going to rent again the year, the next year, and the following year, that they stay with us. Yes, sir. You know, that they don't leave. And appliances is a big piece of it. Appliances are big, big. Yeah. Back to, you know, the, the hot water and the consistency. It's all about basic services. You know, one of these we pride ourselves of the rock stars is our reputation rankings. Yes, sir. You know, and our reputation rankings are some of the highest in the country. Last year, we had four that were ranked in the top 1%. We, that's the... I think third, second or third year in a row that we've had that. This year, Tracy's tracking that we currently have six on pace to possibly have eight by the end of the year, which is really exciting. Yeah, there's about customer know, service. And when you think about there's only like um, 30 properties in all of Houston or 30 plus properties that are ranked in the top 1% overall out of 101,000 communities, you know, to think that we could have eight of them is a big, big deal, big you know, deal. and certainly that, that that's resident reviews. And in those reviews, we read them all. And they're going to tell us the good and the bad. And you know what? You're sitting at this table right now because they don't say too much bad about maintenance. <laughs> they, they're really, really good about it. They're, they're doing good stuff. You know I mean? Yeah. We, we want to provide for them the biggest funnel for the residents to communicate with us so that they're not communicating in the office. This is their, their channel. This is their platform to communicate with us online. And, you know, I read those. As you know, I read every single one. If it's something for sure that I do, I read every single one every of those single. every night when I see them. Yes, and do. I just look for the five-star, five-star. And if five I see star. something that's not, you know, you see that one star, three star, oh, there's going to be something. You know, I read the right one now. star. Or something like that. They'll contact me on LinkedIn. They'll contact me in other ways. They somehow get my email address, you know. And, and it's like, you know, but the good news is that everybody knows that I'm reading them. Everybody's getting them, too. And I forward them back to everybody. And I'm like, hey, you know, this is your property. Everybody's, you know, everybody's CC'd on that email. And we're checking, but most of the times when that occurs, you know, that's how we get accountability with each other. Yes, sir. But again, back to you, your credit is that it's very little as a maintenance. Yeah. You know. And you know, you know, when we have some bad reviews, if I do my map right, it's probably 10%. Uh, true. Uh, we, I believe definitely 75% to 80%, to 80% is somebody that got pissed off, you know, with the property, somebody that's trying to break. Their lease, their lease, their contract. They want to leave. Well, they have issues inside those doors. Yeah, and they just want to blame on something. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's really little, but uh, yeah, it will be days that you uh, send emails out there. And, well, the results are the results. You look yes, at sir. turnover and you look at reputation <coughs> rankings, and if those exactly. are going and trending in the right direction, we know we're doing a really good job as a company. So mm-hmm. yeah, you're gonna get those. Uh, the negative Nancy's out there. Some of them are fake reviews. You see them. Yes, sir. Like, like, wait, yeah. uh-huh. The competition sent us a bad review. In, yeah, <laughs> so luckily we're able to counter those acts. I'm really happy we have, you know, 24-7 customer support. Yes, sir. That helps us That's review really those reviews and answer them and send them back to the right people. And so the phone is always answered and those reviews are always answered, right? So, I mean, that's just how, how it works. Um, uh, Jose, what do you think separates Rockstar from other companies? <sighs> Well, number one, going to the basic is we are really family atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Second most important thing that I, it's really hard for me, but second time is that you as an owner, as an operator of every single property, you are really hands-on. When I say hands-on is that when we have either a small issue to a big issue, you you are only one phone call away. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. And it makes that difference. Mm-hmm. Makes a difference. Uh Definitely, and uh, we we work as a team. Uh, I think that uh, you have put the right tools in front of us, and people that you have today that we wear different hats in our company. We have been with you since day one, and we we pretty much know your answer. Mm -hmm. So that leaves me in situations myself as well, that uh, if I have the answer right there and then I can answer. Uh, if I have a question, there's no shame for asking a question. Mm-hmm. I have my main supervisor, Ms. Melissa, and I'll give her a call. Hey, Ms. Melissa, I'm sorry to bother you. I have this situation. I do not want to answer something that I might be wrong. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm pretty sure that when she has a question, you only one phone call away. So I one, think that's a big difference. One thing they really like about you, you're very coachable. Oh, yes, sir. You, you listen, you know. And I think that's a big term now in sports right now is a player coachable. Can can he admit that there's a different way that the, you know to learn the best process, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, today you're sitting in that meeting, right? You know, we're talking about the equation. The equation, yeah. What's the equation? The equation is that for every ten dollars that we save or we make, is equivalent to about four hundred thousand dollars a year. Now, did you hear that? Did you hear every that a ten dollar movement, right, is equal to four hundred thousand? You ask, well, how's that math, right? Let's say you're able to either, you know, you have the NOI and net operating income, and that's sure. calculated by the income minus expenses. If the managers can find out a way to get ten dollars <clears> on on a unit, whether that comes through other income like charging back for pet fees, charging back for things that we're not doing that we were allowed to do, getting a renewal rent bump, right? $10. If that if they did that across the board for 200 units at that portfolio, at that property, at the end of the year, right? $10 times 200 units times 12 months, right? You get $24,000. $24,000 is equal to a $400,000 increase in value. Yeah. That's huge. And That's Jose, huge. you get that, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, the definitely. same way, you know, and it doesn't have to be income. If you can find a way to save ten dollars on expenses, which is really easy. I mean, let's we're talking today about turnover and I use the example, like if we can reduce turnover, you know, how do why are you spending fifteen hundred dollars or three thirty five hundred dollars? Well, you got paint. You got a paint bucket. Right, I don't have to use that paint bucket. I, I mean how many how many paint buckets does it take to do a unit? Uh, but, uh two, three, four? No, we got. Uh, we can probably use about six gallons on walls and another two gallons on the white. So that's two buckets. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's two sir. buckets, right? Yes, sir. So uh, we can get it on one hundred and ten dollars. One hundred and ten dollars. We can save, right? That's a big number on the NOI. But what if you know a, a, um, the hefty bags, right? A box. I don't know whether ten bucks, twenty yeah. bucks. Yeah. You know, what if you don't have to use that? Multiply that now for every unit, right? Because why do you need bags? We don't need them for the office. Yeah, yeah. We need them for trash shots yeah. for the units, yeah. right? Yeah. Everything adds up. Everything's add up, and 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 I mean. You know, as how you're talking, I'm like, you know, that's why it's really important even to have inspections. Yeah. Once a year. Do you know how much it costs us when we walk in a unit and say, I was seeing this resident, but I did not notice that he used to be a hoarder. A hoarder? Yeah. yeah. You know how much a dumpster costs? You know how much labor that would cost? Thousands, thousands of dollars. Yeah. And we have to rip that. I mean, we've been there uh, a few times. We have some stories. In our nine videos. years, like, yeah, we, 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 we got, so we know. Jose, I know you're going to do a tip later on yes, sir. with our with our uh, video production team on tips, but you know what? Let's do it now. Okay. I want to know right now. Help the people understand. What are some tips, some maintenance tips you can offer? And specifically, if you're an independent owner, right? Yes, sir. Like the way we got started, mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of them out there. I only have one, two, three properties. One, two what are some things that you could help them with? What are some tips you could offer? Number one tips, now we are talking about tip for new owners, correct? Sure, new owners. The number one thing is don't overdo that make ready. Learn learn who you're going to lease. Mm -hmm. I know we all want to have that dollar and 20 cents, but you just have to be realistic and say, if I rent two units right now, what will be my maximum? And the maximum of that is under dollar, if that's 90 cents, you have to get a product that you can afford the night, the night, the, you know, the ninety to a dollar. Let me jump in there. I think you're right. I think you know when we were you know doing our rehabs in the past, not yes, more sure. recent, but in the past, granite was a big thing. People granite wanted to do granite, and oh, if you do granite, you're going to get another a hundred, a hundred fifty bucks, you know, on your rent because people want granite. You know, uh, before that, it was stainless steel appliances. People want stainless steel appliances. appliances. And in the end, it, what did you get? $25, $50. People don't want They want it. Yeah. They don't want to pay for it. And so these people sunk in all this kind of money, right? And they hurt themselves. They, they thought that that was enough. Um, you know, we've just done our stainless <clears> resurfacing. <throat> of the, uh, we have not never done granite. Uh, we have two properties that have granite, but yes, we sir. inherited them. How do you think they work versus the ones that don't have? Granite, obviously, because you don't have resurfacing costs for the counters, right? Because yeah. you're granite. Yeah. <clears throat> How do you think they operate versus those other ones? Well, I, I, I think that it might be easy to lease them, but then I see that a good seller will buy you. I mean, a good seller, a good leasing agent will even sell you a pen. And what we have in our Rockstar is we believe in ourselves and we have pretty good leasing agents that we will sell anything. Now, we know, we learn so many tips, like for example, the resurface. A lot of people out there don't know what resurface is. You go when we have bought properties, 
the resurface that they believe is a three dollars spray can and they just start painting their countertops wow that resurface no that not a resurface we try to be professional we have special machine we train our guys to do a professional resurface with different specs different colors we throw there a coat of a uh, of, uh, clear and it's just make a chime. A clear coat. Clear coat, yeah. yes. And we can have that under $150, $120. But that, but that can we also offer when we have to renew somebody because it's right. easy. So when we try to renew, when we go, you know, knock on some doors and say, hey, you know, is there something I can do? They look at their model and say, I want my kitchen to look like that model. Yeah. Of course I that can happens do all the time, it. Right? Give me three days. Give me two days. Let me work around your schedule. Let me go ahead and do a resurface. Let me paint tablets. Just like that. So those are little tips that we do in house. How about the relationship between the manager and the maintenance? How, how, what 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 we, what advice would you give a new owner? New owner is that they have to be in the same page. There's the captain of the team, and there's the quarterback. The captain and the quarterback? No, yeah. There's the captain okay. of the team. This would be good. And then there's the quarterback. All right. So who's the captain? The, the captain is the manager. Okay. And the manager has to make those decisions because the maintenance guy is. 100% of players, and they have to score. And when I mean they have to score, because they have to they have to do those make ready. So more like the coach and the player. Yeah, well, if you put it that way, yes. Yeah, because yes. the coach calls the plays, and the quarterback executes the plays. Exactly. I got it. Yeah. Makes sense so, to me. So it's just be, be, be one team, you know, because um, it's really easy. Because in the maintenance department, have an idea what the manager does. But at the end of the day, the manager knows what has to be done, but we have to listen to our to our maintenance and be reality with the time that it takes to do that make ready. Mm-hmm. I remember back in the day when I was to be a make ready guy, when I was to be the assistant and the lead maintenance, is the communication skills, the communication. It will be sometimes to say, hey, guys, I'm so excited. We leased three apartments today. And I was like, and you want them next week? No, I need it. I was like, okay, well, this is how we're going to run this play as a team. And sometimes it's, it's fine. It's fine to call that resident back and say, hey, you know, uh, you know, the appliances that we're going to put, uh, the carpet that we're going to put, uh, uh, the company is going to take an extra day. So would it be their problem? Uh, if, if we go this route, I can give you this much. But it takes heart. It takes the communication and have time to deliver those units. I think what you're describing is that relationship when the manager's excited to just lease, lease, lease because they're trying to get to the 90%, they're trying to get to 95%, but they're not talking to the maintenance. They're not like, talking to the hey, maintenance. And the most important know, can, thing. Can, can you make the deadline of Wednesday or Saturday? Well, yeah, I could have, but you already have two more scheduled for this weekend. So, you know, now we have to disappoint the, the resident, right, or the prospective resident, prospect coming in. You know, when maybe you, could have, you just could have just explained to them, yeah, I cannot do this Saturday. I can get you in on Wednesday. In the Wednesday. Right. First thing or if morning. they want to know, don't commit so quickly. Say, so, you know what, let me get back to you, and I'll confirm your moving date. Have you speak to your, your lead maintenance, right, and then come up with a plan together, something where he can sign off on, because then at the end of the day, then what happens if you have to rush it, Jose? Expenses. Well, expensive or help. you make mistakes. Make mistakes, yes. Because you're trying to rush it. Rush it because it will only take a simple walk of 10 minutes. 10 minutes to walk that final product right off that product. And sometimes when we're rushing, we have, I mean, we literally, I mean, there will be situations that is a Friday evening. The cover wasn't here. There are people signing on the office. They have the keys, and you still clean up the last things. Okay, well, what about the last customer service? The last customer service is professionally walk the unit, make sure everything is working properly, everything is connected. Mm -hmm. The AC, plus of that, the leasing agent or the manager has to bring the new resident and show their new home. So what you're saying is that if you don't, give yourself time then you rush in the moving you process rushing, and, and this you won't be you don't get to do that little hand holding that you would normally yeah. do and you know we can bring them comfortable because remember this is they're moving into a strange place this strange is going to be their place. home and you know. they've never lived here before they they're basically li- leasing off of the model uh or maybe uh, if they're from far away off our videos or our websites you know our 3d floor plans you know this is the first time they have actually get to be in this unit and you know you want it to be the best experience right yes, but if you rush that make ready and you don't do the right paint job right because you're trying to get three more done by the end of the day saturday right 
or you know, and you know, Saturday move ins are very. That's, that's when they move in on Saturdays, right? And I, I know we've been there. We've made our mistakes early yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Full transparency. Normal, normal. You know, we're painting on the mistakes. same day that they're moving in. That's not. That's a the no. surface. Do, you know, uh, you know, and doing the same tub at at, at that late. That and day, say, like, please don't, don't use your don't, tub don't use until your tomorrow. Tub today. I mean, I that's that. terrible, right? Yeah. Don't use your tub until tomorrow. I mean, that's not right. <laughs> you know, or the carpet gets done the same day. And you know when a new carpet gets put down, there's going to be the little carpet fibers everywhere. Sure. You know, housekeeping hasn't had a chance to come in and do the vacuum, right? So, you know, it's a rush make ready, and it leaves a bad impression, which affects your renewal. Sure. So you're saying is that have that communication with your manager to make sure that you both agree that, no, it can't be Saturday. It I, can't, I can't get it. It's going to have to be Monday or it's going to be Tuesday, you know, because if not, then I'm going to let you into a unit that I'm not ready to sign off on and it's going to create a bad movement. And if it's a bad, bad movement, it's a bad cyber relationship, a bad review, which hurts you with future <clears throat> leasing opportunities. And it just, you know, it just kills the relationship early on. Yeah, so, definitely, definitely. That's yeah. interesting. So, Jose, tell me a little bit more about, you know, is there another tip before we go into you? Is there another tip you want to share? Uh, another tip to new owners is just uh, no. I mean, we go back to the basic things, boss. Uh, uh, you know, what can I do? What can I subcontract? Uh, um, and just give the basics. Uh, when we first started, you know, the basic is because we were buying C plus properties, B's properties. It doesn't mean that the cabinet is not rotting. It doesn't mean that something is broken. You know, it, it can happen. It doesn't matter if it's a B plus or A plus. But you know, my main cross is it will be situations that the make ready for something so small would take you more than a half day. Gotcha. So the basics is fix and repair your basics. Make sure that your cabinets are not rotten. Make sure this, make sure that your appliances are working. If you don't have the budget to build brand new appliances, make sure that you check 10 points, 20 points. You know, that plan is working correctly. And the most important thing, cleaning. 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 You know, sometimes it's good to pay an extra $5 fee for the cleaning crew, but it will leave that appliance no, it's interesting you just said that. I was about to ask you, like, what is a really good tip to save money? But in reality, you just said, no, spend more money, you know, pay for quality help. Pay for quality right? Because help. it is, it's a representation of who you are. Exactly. And you, you can save five, ten dollars on, on the housekeeper, you know, the cut that you're contracting, you know, instead of paying her forty five dollars, you're paying her thirty five or forty. $35. So you're saying in your experience you're gonna get a thirty five dollar clean. It's not gonna look as good as the one you're person that wanted for an extra forty five or even fifty dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. And they're going to put their extra their effort into it, right? Because you know you they feel like well they they don't think I'm doing a good enough job anyway. They don't think I'm worth more I mean, than it is what it is. Whatever, and oh, here it is. I'm done. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. It makes sense. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is it that you do at Rock? Like, what are the main responsibilities you have? <clears throat> the main responsibilities. I know what you do on a day to day basis, but what do you, what are yeah. your responsibilities? My main 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 responsibility is one of your main as well, boss. Uh, for example. Number one is kind of going to sound kind of a uh, wow, you know, that he just said that. Uh, stealing. 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 Uh, for example, we don't believe in cash no more right in the office. No. no. Why? Because we don't want to have situations that dollars are disappear. Are, end up missing. And that happens. That happens. In my world, in, in the exterior world, is things. If you can buy so many things of something, one box is just going to disappear. So uh, what we do, what I mainly do is be the first ring of safety for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And when I say that is, for example, everything has to be in writing and orders. A quick, quick is when we do a make ready, the lead maintenance has to go and write down exactly what he needs. And he's going to put it on a piece of paper that there's the uh, form. And we will call maintenance supply because that's the supplier that we use. And for that particular unit, it's going to be that order. Uh, we work with this manufacturer that they will come deliver it twice for one screw. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. So there's no excuse. Well, you know, I need to wait. No, no. If you need an order today, you can place it. Of course, we have uh, steps that we don't, you know, that we do one order per week or two orders per week if it's necessary. So what I now do is I put some people in place that we walk every single uh, shop. We make sure that we have our minimums and we have our maximums. And um, every single make ready, it doesn't matter if when one make ready, we have to put a shower rod. That thing has to be in writing. So when my guys, when my assistants or myself, or you walk a property and say, Jose, you know, we spend, we spend quite a money this month on main supply. 
Well, here you go, the boss. Here's all these papers. Here's all they make great boards. Let's walk in. Every single item has to be there. That also helps is that if we order, or we and my job is to look, when we order, it's really simple to over order or to make simple mistake. But guess what? Every ten dollars that I can save, every dollar is equivalent to something, right? Yeah. So my every job, dollar is uh, sixteen dollars. Exactly. So I put in place that I I have to concentrate and I have to look every single order. Technically, nobody's approved anything without my approval first, because I'm the first line of defense. I'm the guy that says, "Okay, well, you ordered so many carpets. Let's put something in place that when you come, when Miss Melissa comes." and ask me why are we spending so much money, I have the right proof. There will be sometimes there will be a situation that if we have to order so many things, so simply just to make a phone call, say, hey, uh, we're this month is going to be heavy. Do you approve all this moving? Mm-hmm. Of course. Let's go ahead. But I'll really let you know. Uh, that's that. Uh, um, you know, just try not to make mistakes because, trust me, it's really easy to go to the store and spend money. Yeah. So that's one of my main things to uh, uh, save the money. Uh, a quick, quick uh, story. When oh, we started you wanna, I, want you, I want you to tell a good, a good story. When we started, uh, uh, Rockstar had uh, the first supervisor. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we got in a situation that we have about 10 properties, we kind of divided the portfolio uh, north side, probably south side. We mm-hmm. used to call it what, west side and, and east side? Yeah, east and west. All right, no, I was like, no, north side and south side, boss. Uh, we were two guys, right? Um, the second super, so again, this is, this is the things that I adapted it, that I that I run it to you and say, uh, you know, like, I was like, boss, man, do you approve this kind of situation? Like, I'm like, oh yeah, the longest it saves money, the longest you can, you can guarantee that things don't get uh, lost mm-hmm. on the shop, let's do it. Um, when I had the opportunity to run the whole portfolio, our first supervisor make a decision to leave the company and, and to uh, do a new chapter in his life. Uh, I remember, <clears throat> I remember the first three to six months, me being overhead of the whole Rockstar portfolio. We were probably already had 12, 14 properties. One of the main guys from uh, this particular st- a store that we buy, every single make ready item, actually caught you. And, you, and I remember you driving and says, this guy is calling me today. What does this guy want? You know what I'm saying? We already have salesmen in place and everything. So then he asks you, you answer, right? And, and says, hey, Mr. Martinez, how you doing? My name is such, such, such. I just wanted to uh, run to you and, and ask you, do you have any problems with their service? And you ask, problems with your service? No. Well, um, you know, is there a the chance that you with somebody else now? Are you buying a product from another vendor? No. Well, has something changed in your company? You were like, well, of course, I'm trying to grow. And you were like, okay, just get to the bottom point. What happened? What do you need? What can I do for you? Well, Mr. Uh, we've been with your company. We've been working with you for the past three, four years. Every single month, every single year, my sales grows with you. So in the last six months, sales have come down 20% now. And you're like, what? Yeah. In the last six months, you have done something, or you buying products right. from somewhere else. In the last six months, twenty percent of my sales have come down with Rockstar. Check this out, boss. So this is 12, 14 properties. Buying what between three thousand to eight thousand dollars worth of materials from this particular company. If you do the math, what I mean, what was that? Uh, big number. Big number. And you only say. The only change that I have done in the last six months is that Jose Alvarado is my main supervisor of whole Rockstar and is putting the safety ring. So every single make rate, every single time that I have to buy from you, Jose has to approve it. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing we're doing. I'm not buying from nobody else, but Jose is the one that's approving 100% as what we're going to spend with you. 20%, I think you told me that we were saving, we were saving about five to $10,000 a month. Right then and then, I was like, I guess I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, I remember that story. It really gets hurt me. That, that savings on the NOI. I mean, I'm not here to put another company into business. 
Yeah, I'm here to take care of Rockstar. Yes, sir. We're here to build this company, not some other company. And if we need to save three thousand, eight thousand dollars a month, or that's whatever, a month. That's a big number. I mean, that's month. on the NOI. I mean, that's massive. Now, uh, we never found out that uh, somebody was stealing. But the thing is that the procedure that I put in place is don't over order things that you don't need. Right. But people mentally are like, no, but we are going to use it next month. Don't no, but we only have what thirty days to make money. Yeah, they that's true to them, and that's. That's another tip that I can give. You only have 30 days. Don't order an extra part if you don't need it. Right. Order into the next one. Right. Just in time. Just in time. It's a concept called just in time inventory. Mm -hmm. That's a great story. Thanks for sharing that. No, thank you. Thank you. All right. I think you did give me a big raise. That I'm month. sure I did. <laughs> I take care of you. I'm sure I did. Uh, so many things. I mean, uh, any, I mean, you know, like uh, anything more you want to ask me? I mean, there, there, there's, there's. That's a lot of material. That's a lot of good that stories. That's okay. That was a really, really good story. That's that a really good really story. Good. You know, and I, I, but I want to end on saying this. You know, the separation of us and other companies is that Jose, our head of maintenance, you know, and with his team, understands that. He understands that $10 across the board on 200 units, whether it comes from income generation or it comes from expense optimization, is $400,000. And that is a big reason, and Jose is a big reason for it, on why we've been able to generate twelve. dollars Big time refinance events. Definitely, definitely. Eleven of them were a hundred percent out, um, and returning millions and millions of dollars for our company. One of the big reasons why we have seventeen city, state, national awards yeah. is because everybody understands the everybody, basic equation. Everybody has to. This is that. why we're in business. This is how we built our brand, and this is how we're going to dig it on the on the moving forward. You know, it doesn't matter if I have it here. And mm -hmm. I have it here. If my team doesn't have it there and they don't have it here, how are we all going to win? We're not going to win. We're not. We're going to be like everybody else and we're going to do it like everybody else and we're going to be forgotten like everybody else. Yes, sir. You know, this company is going to last for a long time. Most companies don't do the things that we do from a company standpoint. Company you know, standpoint. we're going to have our big breast cancer walk that's four years in a row. You know, most companies don't do those things. They don't put their resources into that. They don't put the, the effort into the into their into their 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 communities and their 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 company culture. And we're really excited. You're a big piece of that, Jose. Yeah, so, yeah. friend, everybody, Appreciate I want to thank you for the last eight years. It. It's amazing. Yeah. I look forward to the next 10, 20 years with you, whatever it is, you know. And as we get to 10,000, as we maybe try to get to 20,000, and we're sitting back looking. Maybe remember that time we had that conversation? No, we were like 30, remember those times? Uh, it was a lot easier back then, but, you know, <laughs> certainly there's always a lot of fun going on. Jose, thank you for today. I it's been amazing. It. Thank you for inviting thank me you. over. It's awesome to have you. you know. I'm sorry you weren't guest number one. I know no, that probably. No, no, no. No bad. worries, no worries, so, big guy. You're, you're finally here. We'll bring you back again real soon. Um, hope you guys enjoyed another episode of the Apartment Rockstar. It was a lot of fun today. As you can tell, there's a big relationship between me and Jose. He's one of the tips of the spear of this Rockstar Capital's um, portfolio, and he's a big reason why, why we're successful. So until next week's episode, we'll catch you later.